Your Excellency Jacob Zuma, President of the Republic of South Africa, Deputy President Halima Motlante, Mama Glasa, Michelle Mamawini, members of the Madiba family, Your Majesty the King of Lesotho, Your Royal Highnesses, Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, Arab Ministers, members of the Diplomatic Corps, and representatives of international organizations, fellow mourners, comrades, and friends. I bring with me fraternal greetings, as well as greetings of solidarity from your brothers and sisters of the United Republic of Tanzania. They've asked me to convey to you our deepest condolences to you, Mr. President, to the Madiba family, and to all the people of South Africa on the passing of His Excellency Nelson Holishasha Mandela, the first black president of the new South Africa and the former president of the African National Congress. The people of Tanzania would like you to know that you are not alone. They are with you during this difficult period of mourning, and they will be with you thereafter. They are saying your grief is our grief, your loss is our loss. Nelson Mandela was our leader, our hero, our icon, and our father as much as he was yours. The people of Tanzania have lost a great friend. The people of Tanzania have lost a great comrade in arms. Comrades, President Mandela had a long association with Tanzania. It, dat it dates back to the times of the struggle for independence and liberation here in South Africa and in Tanzania. Our two sister parties, the ANC and TANU, the Tanganyika African National Union, later Chama Chama Pinduzi, enjoyed special relations with each other. We supported each other at the time of need. It was no accident, therefore, that after the ANC decided to take the, the struggle to the next level and form the armed wing from Konto Esizwe. After peace, after peaceful means seemed to be futile, Dar es Salaam was Madiba's first port of call in January 1962. He left South Africa secretly through Bechuana land at that time, northern Rhodesia, into Tanganyika through the town of Mbea. And then from there, arrangements were made for him to come to Dar es Salaam. His mission was to seek support for the armed struggle and a place to train the MK combatants. Comrades and friends, he met our first president, now late, Julius Kambaragi Nyerere. And I'm humbled to say that I have also come with me his widow, Mama Maria Nyerere, is here with us. Indeed, this visit of Madiba was later to become a landmark event which had the profound effect in changing the course of history of this great nation, culminating in the fall of apartheid in 1994 and the birth of the new South Africa. 
Though at first, President Nyerere had some reservations or hesitations in his discussions with Madiba about how, when and how to initiate the armed struggle, he accepted Madiba's request and provided members of the MK both permission to live in Tanzania and places to train. I'm sure the ANC and MK veterans gathered here. To them, names like Kongwa, Mgagao, Morogoro, Mazimbu. and Akawa sound familiar. And when we mention them, they may even rekindle the nostalgic memories of the life they lived in Tanzania, sharpening their tools and skills of defeating apartheid. But President Nyerere went further. Beyond availing places to live and to train, he offered Tanzania's own moral and material support, meager as it was, but it was very symbolic to us. But also Malim was instrumental in mobilizing regional and international support for training and arming the combatants. Indeed, this applied to all other liberation movements, the PAC, MPLA, Swapo, Zanu, Zapu, and Fralimo. Besides that, Tanzania was generous enough to give cadres of the liberation movement travel documents. passports, and all that what is needed. And when necessary, some of them assumed the Tanzanian names. When Madiba came to Tanzania, he had no passport. But from Tanzania, he was going to Lagos, to, to Accra, then Lagos, and Addis Ababa. He was given a Tanzanian travel document. It facilitated his movement. And I know a number of you use Tanzanian travel documents I don't know if Tabo returned his. <laughs> Comrades and friends, Madiba's trip to Dar es Salaam was to change the fortunes of the ANC after being banned by the apartheid regime here in South Africa. The ANC found a new home in Tanzania, from where it operated, <laughs> organized, spearheaded, and prosecuted the struggle. From Tanzania, the ANC was able to reach its cadres and other members who remained and operated from inside South Africa through discreet means of communication. From Tanzania, the ANC was able to have messages reach the broad masses of the people of South Africa through publications, Sechaba, and dedicated radio broadcast. Radio Freedom. <laughs> Broadcasted from Dar es Salaam. As a matter of fact, the government of Tanzania had built a special radio station 
for the liberation movements. The ANC was able to get back the voice that was denied to them by the apartheid regime. Comrades and friends, there is another interesting thing about Madiba's first visit to Tanzania in 1962, which I would like to share with you. In order to keep the visit discreet, he did not stay in hotel. He stayed at the home of Tanu's treasurer, who was then the Minister of Commerce and Industries, Mr. Santarabi Zefanian Seroswai, who is now late. On his departure, on his onward trip to Accra, Lagos, Addis, and Algiers, he left behind his boots at Mr. Swai's home in the hope that on his way back, he would pick up the boots. Unfortunately, he could not pass through Dar es Salaam again, and shortly after arriving back in South Africa, he was arrested and imprisoned and spent the 27 years in Robben Island. But fortunately, the Swai family kept the boots awaiting his return. In 1995, when Mandela was president, the pair of boots were handed back to him. <laughs> By Mrs. Vicky Siloswai, the widow of the late Siloswai, who died in 1994, shortly before Madiba became president. I have brought Mama Vicky and Siloswai with me to bid farewell to their special guests and friends. <laughs> Comrades, after his release from prison and after visiting Lusaka for the meetings of the National Executive Committee of the ANC, Madiba came to Dar es Salaam. It was not again by accident. He was met by the largest crowd Tanzania has ever seen receiving a foreign dignitary. <laughs> and that record has never been broken. But mind you, it rained heavily that day. As chiefs, so when, when, when the chiefs come, oh, it always rains. That's the belief in our part of the world. But people never left their positions. They thronged the airport, lined the streets of Dar es Salaam, braving the rain to see their hero, their icon, their leader, Nelson Polisha Asha Mandela. Indeed, Mandela's charisma is unmatched in modern times. Of course, he visited the facilities of ANC, Morogoro, Iringa, and spent the night with the, co with the combatants of MK at Mgagao, their training base. Comrades and friends, I've narrated all these stories and anecdotes to let you, the people of South Africa, know how far back the current excellent relations between our two friendly countries and between the ANC and Chama, Chama Pinduzi have come from. It is not by accident that South Africa and Tanzania enjoy excellent bilateral relations. We are close friends and allies because our common, because our common history unites us. We see eye to eye on many bilateral, regional, and international issues. We support each other at regional and international fora. Comrades, it is none other than our founding father, First President Malim Julius Nyerere, and the, the founding father of this new South Africa, President Nelson Mandela, who were responsible for this friendship and cooperation. They built very strong foundations for our bilateral relations. That is why I said at the beginning that Madiba is very much our leader, our hero, our icon, and our father as he is to you. That is why your sadness 
grief and sorrow are ours as well. That is why we also join you in celebrating the life of this great man. Comrades and friends, as we mourn the death of this great man, let us recommit ourselves to continue to strengthen the excellent relations which are so happy to exist between South Africa and Tanzania. Let us also continue to work closely together at regional and international fora to advance his ideals for a strong SADC, a, a, vital, a, a, a vitalized African Union, and an effective United Nations bold enough to fight injustice, to fight for equality of all nations and all peoples. And let us fulfill his wish to see developing nations working together in unity and solidarity in pursuit of their rights and in their quest to lift themselves from poverty and prosperity. And you, my brothers and sisters of South Africa, Madiba has lived his life well. You should leave his legacy. He has left behind a vibrant democracy. He left behind a new nation where black and white South Africans live together harmoniously. A nation where nobody is denied his or her basic rights because of the color of his skin. A nation where blacks can also prosper, unlike in the past, when they were condemned to live in squalor, deprivation, and as third class citizens in their own country. We know not all that he stood for has been achieved yet. It is foolhardy also to assume that all the ills of the former apartheid system will be corrected in these 19 years. <laughs> Nonetheless, a lot has been achieved, although much more has to be done. The ANC government is doing it. Please stay the course and always strive for greater excellence. Remain united as a people and remain united as a nation. This way, you will honor this great statesman, this great son of this soil, in a manner that he would be pleased if he were alive. This is the best way to live his legacy. We'll always hold you in our prayers. You are not alone. Hamba Kale Tata Mandela.